So what I wanted to show you was this, and I think it's pretty awesome. Um, we're going to pull it apart and have a look at it and show you how to make it. But what you do is tap. And if you tap it, you'll hear that horrible clicking sound. And the reason it's a horrible clicking sound is because it's going through the Microsoft uh, Wave synthesizer. You can put this through a sound processor like FL Studio or GarageBand, and you could link this with a drum or a xylophone or something like that. Because you're hitting a transducer, actually they're piezos. You hit the piezos, it takes that sound through the UNO, feeds it as a MIDI into the computer, that would then go into the garage band and you could make yourself a drum kit. So what that is, is a painted musical instrument. Now there's lots of tutorials on how to link it with garage band, uh, but there are many tutorials on how to actually make this. So I'm going to concentrate on this and we're going to go through how it was actually made. So let's go through it. Okay, so what I've done is obviously um, this is going from the UNO to the um, computer and that's carrying the MIDI signal. Then it's going through MS Wave table. Uh, I'm bringing the output through this amplifier and then into to that speaker. So that's what all these connections are. So if we take away the amplifier, unplug the UNO. Incidentally, the way it's plugged in here is I just take a needle, poke the needle into the ink, and then stuff a jumper cable in. So those jumper cables are just in needle holes. There we go. Now, it's all on the analog. So if we have a look at this side here, then these are the analog pins, and each one of these goes to one analog input. The other two analog inputs were actually sent to ground, and that's just to stop spurious signal generation. So each one of these goes into the analog um, pin, and it doesn't matter which one it is. Any spare analog pins you put to ground, and then this other pin here is on the ground connection on that bar of the UNO here. Now, I got the UNO sketch uh, from GitHub, and I'll put a link in the description for that. And all I did was went on to the UNO website and the uh, web-based RDE, copied and pasted the sketch, and then uploaded the sketch to the UNO via the USB, then closed all that down because the USB is now going to be taking the MIDI signal. So the inputs come in on the analog, the UNO translates them into a MIDI, gets transmitted from here into the computer, then the computer has to link that with an associated sound. Now I used MS Waveform because I didn't want to pay for um, garbage band or anything, uh, and, and it's only a demonstration for me, I don't really want to get into the music of it. If you really want to get into it, then get yourself a good synthesizer and you're away. We unplug the UNO board, there we go, it's as simple as that. That's all they do to connect the UNO to it and how to get the UNO program running and as I say, that stuff is in the description. So for me, here's the really interesting bit. And that is a circuit made with our uh, conductive ink. So we'd, I just painted that on there with our ink. And you'll notice there's a long bar here, some short bits here, and then these really thin ones here. These thin ones are actually one mega ohm resistors. And to make those, I put some tape on the paper, painted around it, measured the resistance, and scraped it with the blade until it was one mega ohm. And they became one mega ohm uh, resistors, which is awesome because we're painting passive components. These here are piezos. And we've got a bag of them here. They're very cheap. And that's what they look like. And they are just glued onto that strip. So let's have a go at making one of those. Okay, so to make one of these, it's really simple. All you actually need is some masking tape, a bit of paper, paintbrush, some conductive ink, and anywhere between one and six of these. These are uh, piezoelectric transducers. You can buy them on the net. They're a couple of pence each. The other thing you need, obviously, is your Arduino. So to make those resistors that we saw at the beginning, it's really simple. Just lay down some of your masking tape, and we're going to need to make, we're going to make a full uh, one, so we're going to need eight little lines. And you just put them so there's a little gap between each of those, because that's, uh, that's where the resistor is actually going to be made. And we need to make eight of those, so there's two of them. Three, four, five, six, 
seven. Eight. So we're going to run those down to about there. So just mask that off. And they're going to go up to about here. And mask that off. Dead simple. Open the ink. Give it a stir. And then paint on those little thin lines. And now what we need to do is dry them. Okay, so they're dry, so just peel off the masking tape. There you go, you end up with eight black lines. Now what we need to join, do is join those up in pairs. So with a thin brush, join them up in pairs. And they will become our four mega ohm resistors. So when they're properly dry, we test the resistance here. And if it's too high, take a blade or something and scrape over it and you will increase the resistance and just keep scraping until they're round about a mega ohm. So 900k, 1.1 megs, doesn't really matter, somewhere round about there. What we now need is the ground line and for the ground line you just paint a huge black line all the way down there. And that's where the ground is going to attach. We're going to bridge over those and we're going to go into this section here and this will be where the signal attach is made so we can paint four signal attachment points there. And to attach the Arduino to the signal we're just going to poke a needle through those four attachment points and poke the wire, the jumper wire, into those. And those will be the four attachment points that we use. And that's the ground point there that we're going to use. So that's the ground line, they're the signal points, these are the resistors. Now these resistors need attaching to the ground line, so we can just extend one side of the resistors there to make the attachment to the ground line. And now we need to dry that again. Okay, once that's dry we take our four piezo elements and we need to glue them in line with this second leg. So a spot of ordinary glue just put it on there. And then with the silvery disc pointing upward and the copper pointing downward, just put them on there. And they will become our sensor pads. Now we need to join this up to this, passing through the center of this, without touching this. And it's really easy to do, just pop a bit of masking tape on it. So we have a look at the masking tape size, it wants to go from there to that, and cut four strips of masking tape around about the same size. And then use that masking tape to bridge between the two. So going from there to there, over the centre of the disc that you just glued on, like that.
But now we can join those up. And you join those up just by painting across that masking tape. So a thick blind on the masking tape to where the connection point is, and then uh, join that to there. A couple more things to do. We need to spot a little bit of ink on that silvery bit. Just like that, joined to the line we put on the masking tape. And then where the copper is that we glued down a little spot of ink there that is effectively a cold solder. And that's it. So we again dry that, and what you end up with is that. So these are the signal lines, those four there. There are four sensors we're going to tap, and that's the ground line where everything else goes. So just to go through that Arduino again, when we look at the Arduino, here are the analog inputs. So each one of these goes to a separate input line. The remaining ones, in this case there's two remaining ones, go to the ground and go into the analog input. You don't strictly need to do that, but it stops spurious signal noise. And then the final is the ground of the Arduino goes to that ground there. So we just plug those straight back in there, and we're ready to go again. In order to get those in there, all I did was stab it through with a needle, and it makes the thing just right for the jumper cable. If you want a more permanent solution, clip them on. Or put a spot of paint on once you put the jumper leads in there, or use a crocodile clip, or something like that. I just like the idea of poking it into the bit of card, because I think it's so easy to do that anybody could do it. Anyway, if you fancy having a go at that, obviously I'll put a link to the ink. I'll put a link as well to the Arduino sketch. Very simple, just copy the sketch into the IDE and upload it to your Arduino. And um, that's all there is to it. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? And slightly ridiculous. <laughs> to be honest, I think it's superb. So there's lots of things you could do with that. Uh, I thought I'd share it with you. I hope it was of interest, and thank you very much for watching.